What do most narcissists want you to bargain? It's not what you think. Stay tuned for the video. Mwah, my stars, thank you guys and gals so much for your subscription. Thank you for being my stars. If this is your first time visiting Luminous Star, welcome to the channel. On this channel, we are outshining narcissist abuse syndrome. Please check the description box below for further details to today's vlog. Welcome to vlog number 99. Quote, in serving the wicked, expect no reward and be thankful if you escape injury for your pains. Aesop Fables from the Wolf and the Crane, page 17. Please check the description box below for further details, such Don't as to check the, the description quote. box below for further details to the quote, as well as references and or resources. Your disloyalty. Okay. Now, in other words, this is all a threat and a challenge to their false self image. But keep that in mind as we go further into this vlog. There are many narcissists or many who have a narcissistic personality who perceives your capacity to feel and express love, joy, gratitude, even happiness as a sign of your disrespect, of your disloyalty of him or her. To answer that question, what is it that most narcissists want you to bargain? Well, your capacity to be loyal, not only to others, but yourself. If you're loyal to other people, should you choose to be loyal to other people rather than the narcissist? Yes, they may perceive that as a slight. They may perceive that as you're being insensitive to them, as you're being disrespectful to him or her. As I mentioned before, your capacity to even express love gratitude, yet alone choosing to be loyal to yourself and others, yeah, that's a thumbs down. That's something that most narcissists find to be disloyal or a sign of disloyalty to him. So her. most narcissists want you to bargain your freedom to make a choice, to be loyal to other people rather than him or her. Even when you're loyal to yourself, that freedom to make a choice is a real threat to their false self image. So the thing that narcissists want you to bargain the most is your capacity to choose to be loyal to others and yourself. Once you bargain that, what does the narcissist want you to have in exchange? There are three things that the narcissist may want you to have in exchange for what you have bargained, which is your freedom to choose whom you may be loyal to. An inability to emotionally regulate. The inability to choose critical thinking. An inability to see that it is natural to choose to pursue happiness for yourself. So those three components consist of other components. Component number one, the demonstration of your having self-control looks like this. Your being able to process emotions, self-regulatory processes. Should you become triggered, you're able to feel emotions, to have certain thoughts when you are triggered, and you're able to process that. You can self-soothe or self-regulate. So when you demonstrate that you have some self-control, that means that you are practicing self-regulatory processes. Narcissists don't want you to have that ability. Component number two, emotional discipline or mentalization. Component number three, personal growth, which is reflective of your having the ability to make good choices for yourself. Narcissists don't want you to have this ability. So if you're showing these signs, he or she may see that as, or they may perceive that as disrespectful or a sign of your not being loyal to him or her. When you show signs that you have an inability to find it natural to pursue your own happiness, in other words, you're people pleasing, you're loyal to the narcissist, well, the narcissist likes this. 
because that serves their false self-image or their false self-image. So you're giving up a part of your freedom in order to be loyal to the narcissist or cluster personality type in your life. So he or she, they're gonna like this because it serves them. So what you wanna do is show signs of personal growth. So the narcissist does not want you to have the ability to emotionally regulate. They don't want you to find it natural to pursue your own happiness. They don't want you to critically think about what's going on in the relationship because that means there is no narcissistic supply coming their way, okay? So all three of those components reflect adaptive coping skills. In other words, you, you know, it's not maladaptive. It doesn't work against you. It works for you. Now, all of these components consist of mindfulness tools, all right? So when you practice, my, this is why in a lot of my videos, one of the tools that I suggest is to exercise or practice mindfulness. Mindfulness tools consist of assertion, personal boundaries or practicing personal boundaries, self-preservation, and emotional discipline. All of these are adaptive coping skills that will help you to identify core issues. Core issues can be the narcissistic relationship, the core issue could be narcissistic personality. The core issue that may be identified is your way of relating to others, okay? Or the narcissist's way of relating to so others. So when you are identifying core issues, you're keeping the narcissist starving because they not, they're not able to get the supply from you. Because remember, when you practice self-preservation, when you practice mindfulness, all of those things I mentioned about mindfulness, when you're practicing that, the narcissist or the cluster personality type, it would be very challenging for him or her to get the narcissistic supply because you're choosing to be loyal to yourself and other people who have chosen, who have actually proven to be trustworthy to you. So you have that freedom to choose whom you want to be loyal to. You're not just people pleasing people who are predatory in nature, like your narcissist or the cluster personality types in your life, all right? So you're not just pleasing them or you're choosing not to please them. You're choosing to invest in yourself. You're simply choosing to be loyal to yourself. You're choosing to be loyal to other people that you know love and care about you. So when you comprise that all with identifying the core issue, that's checkmate. So those adaptive coping skills help you to identify the core issue. The core issue, again, can be the narcissistic personality. The core issue you may discover is how you relate to other people. How do you do relationships? How do you tend to problem solve? Does it work for you or against you? The core issue that you may discover may be the narcissistic relationship itself. Okay, so it's pretty easy to get caught up in that drama of the narcissistic relationship where you become the focal point, where you become the focus of the narcissist's rage, anger, pain, anguish, whatever they don't like. You become the focal point. You become the target of that. So it's very easy to get caught up, right? Because this is where projection comes in. The narcissist, they project their reality that they want you to perceive. Okay, so it may not be reflective of reality at all. So, but when you get caught up in that drama of the narcissistic relationship, it is very easy to get caught up. And when you do so, you're also accommodating him or her. So this is also where the loyalty comes in. You're being loyal to him or her. Now, this is not to scold. I'm just painting a real picture here of what a lot of us go through. Even yours truly, I've gone through this. I found myself being very loyal to the cluster B personality type. Come to find out my loyalty was valued, but I wasn't being valued. I wasn't being appreciated. 
So at the same time, the loyalty was being valued. It wasn't being appreciated because a lot of narcissists have a strong sense of entitlement. So even though you may you know, be loyal, you may love, you may care, they'll take all of that and eat it up for narcissistic supply, but they don't appreciate your loyalty. They don't appreciate your love. They don't appreciate, see, it's a big difference. That's really what I'm gonna break down in this video. So most narcissists want you to bargain your freedom to be loyal. But in exchange for that, they want you to have certain inabilities. When we choose to accommodate the narcissist or the cluster personality type in our lives, well, one of the things that's happening is that we are accepting their reality instead of critically thinking about what's really going on in the relationship. So when they project, in other words, they feed us or they, they give us a certain reality that they want us to perceive as reality when it's not reality as all, at all. It's a figment of their imagination and they feed it to us and we accept it because we're loyal to him or her. So by accommodating their reality or their perspective of reality that they want us to believe, we're also becoming responsible financially, sexually, uh, spiritually, psychologically, mentally, emo you know, emotionally, we're becoming responsible for him or her, even legal responsibilities, okay? Uh, I mentioned psychological, but you get the picture. In so many ways, you, you're becoming, by accommodating him or her and, and being loyal and accepting their perspective of reality, you become responsible, maybe even feel uh, obligated to your narcissist or cluster personality type. Very often, we may accommodate him or her by habitually, as well as unconsciously, claiming dysfunctional roles in the narcissistic relationship with him or her. What are some of those, what are some of those dysfunctional roles? I mentioned this in a lot of my videos. One of those roles that we may unconsciously and habitually claim is role of scapegoat. We may also be people pleasing or being a people pleaser. All right, another dysfunctional role in the narcissistic relationship is one of an enabler, a flying monkey, an emotional punching bag, a human wastebasket. I think you all get the picture, but this does not empower you, but it supplies the narcissist. So when it comes down to loyalty, of which they want you to bargain, once again, what are you getting in exchange for that? Once you give that up, your freedom to choose whom you would like to be loyal to, starting with yourself. When you give that up, what do you get in exchange? When we unconsciously choose to claim habitually these dysfunctional roles, it keeps us in a sunken place for a long time. A person may bargain their freedom for codependency. All right, so, you know, what does that look like? That's, that's like a cold narcissism within a narcissistic relationship. So when we are uh, choosing to be loyal to the narcissist, what comes with that? Well, that means we're giving up a freedom in exchange for codependency, which is like a, a bounding. It's like a binding. It's like that toxic tie. It's like trauma bonding. And these are some of the things, these that, are some of the things that some of us are very familiar with. You know, I know about the toxic tie. So some of us, again, we're familiar with these types of things. We have experienced this repeatedly because, or as a result of being in a narcissistic relationship. So be mindful of exchanging, first of all, loyalty to yourself for the codependency or a co-narcissism. What does co-narcissism look like? Well, it's when all participants of a narcissistic relationship continue to claim dysfunctional roles in order to keep that narcissistic relationship active. So your loyalty is something that they value, but they don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate you for it. It's almost like a person, just picture a person who receives supply. He or she may not care who the supplier is, 
just as long as they're getting the supply. So, you know, imagine if I were a person who loves uh, some sort of uh, food like chocolate, right? You are my best supplier. So once you stop supplying me chocolate, I don't care who steps up next to supply me the chocolate, just as long as I get the chocolate. This is often what narcissists and cluster, some cluster personality types perceive the loyalty to be or any other positive trait that you bring to the table in a narcissistic relationship. So your loyalty is valued, but is not appreciated. Jokey B.